one. A great day ahead. I don't know if you're looking at it in the morning or in the afternoon. A big thank you, of course, to Adapt for having me again. I think it's the third or the fourth time being one of their speakers. Who am I? I'm uh, Dr. Daniele Gamber, a propenomist, president of the Malaysian Protect Association, big passionate about uh, numbers, uh, big data, analytics, uh, and more. And uh, today I'm going to present uh, the, uh, the back scene, the back end of uh, smart city development. Smart cities uh, are uh, everywhere. Everyone is talking about uh, them, uh, are becoming the big buzz. Uh, there are a lot of plus, uh, minus, uh, pros, cons uh, in Smart City. There are new Smart City coming up. Uh, there are also uh, all the cities uh, uh, which have been or are going uh, undergoing the process of retrofitting towards becoming Smart City. All these uh, bring uh, challenges. And as you all know, as we all know, Challenges means opportunities. Let's share screen and start our very short, my very short presentation on smart cities. One second, please. What we all should know about the why smart cities as a first thing and what, what will benefit all of us in the moment in which smart cities will be developed. What is a smart city? A smart city, the word smart, identify a deep dive and deep use of information and communication technology to enhance livability, workability, sustainability, uh, community creation, transaction, and whatever more. Urbanism and city evolution from uh, dumb cities like this towards smart cities. The process has been starting very long ago, more than 50 years ago, when Los Angeles created the first urban big data project, a cluster analysis of Los Angeles. Here is a bit of a, a timeline and the milestone of 1974 till 2022, where we are with a big uh, uh, milestone set in 2015, when the Sustainable Development Goals have been first launched and undersigned by 159 governments around the world. Now, what is forward? Moving forward, we are looking at, uh, within the next eight years, by the year 2030, uh, an increase of number of cities in the world with a population above 10 million megalopolis so-called and the bigger a city becomes the smarter the city needs to be moving from dumb city to tech and smart city before entering in understanding what is the back end office what is the backbone what uh, what is the indispensable vaccine of smart cities becoming more sustainable becoming uh, uh, prompt to react when someone starts shouting uh, the house is on fire. Not because the house is on fire, but because the planet Earth is on fire. And when there is fire, we all need to rush with our action, constructive and productive action. Is what Greta Thunberg, one of the uh, most famous SDG activist, environmental activist in the world. She has been speaking in front of world leaders for several years now. And she has been promoting, uh, I don't want your hope. I want you to act and I need you to act today, not tomorrow. Don't do too much planning. Don't lose too much time in thinking what to do or if to do, do. Do it because the 17 goals defined in 2015, by the United Nations and 198 countries from all around the world need to be achieved by the year 2030. And we are still far behind it. In property, in the real estate, we have a dedicated goal, which is SDG 11 for sustainable cities and communities. But automatically, in the moment in which a city becomes a smart, smart city, 
the smart side of uh, these uh, cities will help in reducing poverty, reducing uh, hunger, providing good health and well-being to all the inhabitants of the smart city, equality education, gender equality, clean water, and so on and on till the goal 17, what I define the most important of the SDG goals, because it's the partnership for the goals. SDG is what? It's about delivering value in a trustable, transparent manner to all the stakeholders, considering the impact that a company, a government, an action, an initiative could have both on people and planet and going above and beyond to behave responsibly. Here I give you some very simple example of application of environmental actions, social actions and government actions, starting from your home living, bringing it to school, work, and then asking the people that are ruling the country to attain to these very important guidelines. Important also to know how the 17 goals are actually divided within these three pillars of environmental, social, and governance. Environmental is all related to action which are uh, helping the environment to uh, be preserved, uh, high respect for biodiversity, and the responsible use of resources. Social, social has to do with people. So all the activities where people are involved, such as quality education, uh, work uh, balance between men and women, uh, reducing inequalities. There are still too many wars against too few hyper-rich. Things that should, should be a bit more balanced for the future. Of course, the sustainable cities and community in a peaceful and filled up with justice environment. And last but not least, the partnership for all the goals. And then we, we get governance where the government and the CSR activities of big and small corporate can help in reducing poverty and hunger, uh, providing good health and well-being to everyone as a right, decent work for everyone, and uh, industry and uh, innovation uh, movement towards better infrastructure and a more smart way of living in smart cities. Going back uh, to uh, the smart city pillars and the smart city concept, we all know that smart cities are based on six pillars. Actually, we are based on six pillars from environment to mobility to economy, people, governance, and living, those are six areas of interest were and are deeply touched by introduction of digitalization. And the six pillar of mass smart cities, action-wise in, term, in terms of ESG and ISDG, are very easy to be uh, looked at under the three areas of intervention, environment, social, and government. So those are the principles that should be the inspiring backstage push for Smart City to be developed. Back to Smart City. Why this term Smart City, after being launched in the 70s, has begun the big hoo-ha, in the last few years and has been rapidly growing since the year 2000. Point one, because uh, uh, urban challenges are rising all around the world. The urban population is increasing, urban poverty is becoming a social issue, resources are very limited and uh, we need uh, to consume them, to use them in a very responsible manner. And uh, thanks God, technology is uh, beside us as the biggest ally in this uh, developing uh, process uh, towards uh, more smart cities. Technology innovation is uh, available uh, at uh, very affordable values and uh, to be implemented in a very easy manner. 
can be implemented understanding first what is the reason behind the why behind the smart cities adoption, not only by people, but mostly by government, because the uh, smart city adoption process starts with a kickoff from top down. So there are three models that have been identified around the world. The blue dots on the map here are showing you the uh, status of development of smart cities. Now, the first is the commercial model. The commercial model is very common and popular in North America. The second, which is the Western, again, the first one was US, this one is more applicable and more applied in Europe, uh, is good, but you cannot have an exceeding component of uh, uh, social, totally forgetting either environment and government or government and put in a bit of environment. So should be a balanced manner of approaching. And then there is a model that we are using the most in Asia, the institutional model, where the, the modeling of smart city, as I was mentioning a few slides ago, is a top-down uh, drive by governments as part of institutionalized smart city strategies. They are usually aligned to well-defined political agendas and involve a high level of government participation. But again, if the government is the one kicking off a smart city project, businesses and people living in the subject city will, in one way or the other, contribute to the success of the smart city development integration. So these are the three models. The one that I prefer the most is the institutional, because the big changes should be always be driven by the top towards the down. All the aspects of our living day in a smart city are daily based, uh, touched and impacted by technology, which somehow we have been experiencing a little bit during the last two years, during the pandemic, when we were all closed in our homes, we have been understanding how much in technology, digitalization, digital transformation have been impacting our day-to-day -day life. I was showing to you this image one few minutes ago for the impact in terms of uh, environment, social, and government. I use this same image to highlight the seventh pillar, which has been introduced less than five, six years ago, within the pillars indispensable to be uh, looked at and properly developed if we want to achieve smart city development. This pillar is the smart the digital infrastructure. So how a smart city should be thought about? The very, very first thing is the human-centric approach. Cities are dumb. With or without technology, they will remain dumb if are not human-centric. Humans are the one, we are the one, living, working, playing, learning, and much more in our cities. So we need to be considered in an extremely inclusive manner. When I say inclusive, I mean children, women, elderly, disabled. All of them should be taken in consideration when thinking about the development of smart city then only I built a digital infrastructure or smart digital infrastructure. I need a backbone where I can plug all my needs as a citizen and where the service providers will plug in all their plies in such a manner that whatever else is in the market, being it private, public, or government controlled or whatever else, will be plugged into the digital infrastructure, becoming connected and fully interconnected with all citizens. This is what smart city means. Nothing less than this. The backstage of a properly developed smart city, the smart digital infrastructure. Part of it will be blockchain in the future. 
uh, some cities are already implementing a blockchain as a backbone, but the blockchain is only a electronic ledger which holds the data. You need the infrastructure or 5G. 5G is another component of the smart digital infrastructure. You need the network where everything will be connected. Then only you will be able, we will be able to see uh, realized, uh, truly realized uh, smart city project. Here we have uh, the big opportunities in a smart city development project. Uh, don't look at big things, just look at uh, the basic uh, problem statement, uh, challenges that smart cities are having today. Traffic congestion is still uh, the top king of all the issues corruption, security, health services, air pollution. Here on this slide, you can have a very easy reference on the challenges of today for a better future. And of course, we all need to keep in mind that we are closely connected when we are part, when we are citizen of a smart city. What does it mean? That there is, there must be a give and take type of uh, relationship. We want better service. Do we want uh, to allow people to tap into our personal data? Do we want to have a higher security? Do we want people to collect our bio uh, data uh, in terms of facial recognition or uh, thumbprint or whatever? Do, <coughs> do we feel that uh, implementing uh, uh, a digital transformation top down in the government uh, can increase uh, the trust in authorities. Keep in mind one thing computers, uh, AI are not lying. They just uh, get data, store data, return data, and the data is untouched. So, implementation of a full digital transformation process will for sure increase the trustability of our government. And last but not least, let's use more cashless transaction compared to the cash transaction because e-wallet, e-payment, payment gateways are today plenty of available in the market. So with this, I have been completing this short introduction to smart cities. You get in touch with me if you want to know more. I am a consultant for several smart city and smart township projects in different areas. I am a certified consultant, actually, just recently, and I can help you in understanding better the smart city. You can follow me, of course. You can follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, scanning this barcode will connect you directly to my LinkedIn account, or you can follow me in Facebook. One more thing that I would like to recommend to all of you, go and have a look at the website of Malaysian PropTech Association, which has been growing consistently for the last five years. We have today more than 100 members, and we are keep on leaving an impact, a positive impact in the Malaysia built environment. And not only, we are becoming more and more a global player, I would say. With this, I've been completing my short presentation. Hope all of you have been finding it interesting. And again, connect with me to know more. Connect with me to keep on learning new things as I am too every single day. So let's go back to a face-to-face -face type of uh, closing. Thank you again, ADAPT, uh, IQI, Juhai, for inviting me again to your uh, uh, annual event and looking forward to the next year one, which I heard should be a physical one. Thumbs up to you guys and girls. Bye-bye and have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.